Hi, my name is Billy Matsunaga. I'm a certified kimono teacher and stylist and today I'm going to show you how to put on a hakama. This is the third video of my little hakama series on this channel. We already know what hakama is, what its history is, how long Japanese are wearing them, why they are wearing them and I already showed you how to fold a hakama. <laughs> I forgot what my first video was. <laughs> and yes, I know, actually I promised you to show you how to make a monpe, a so-called yamabakama, by yourself uh, in the third video. But um, yeah, I didn't really come around to film my sewing. I usually sew at night and that's when it's way too dark to film. And my monpe is right now lying on my sofa and waiting to get some of the parts finished I would definitely have to film and probably show you. I can already tell you I'm not really satisfied with the outcome but it's good enough. <laughs> so today I'm going to show you how to put on a hakama and I will show you how to do that from scratch but I will not go into super details with how to put on a nagajuban and how to put on a kimono because I have already made some amazing tutorials for you and if you haven't watched them yet this is the time for you I will link them down below and up here somewhere so you can check them out but when you put on a hakam you have to do a little twist which means you have to wear the hem shorter and I'm going to show you how you can do that in this video. Today I want to concentrate on how to tie the obi for the hakama and also how to put on the hakama itself. You will see it's super easy. I have shooted it all in one take and it took me like less than 10 minutes. So it's really, really easy and you will have so much fun if you in your hakama. Let me go over the items we need that I have in here right now. As you can see, I'm wearing my hakama right now, so I can't actually really show you. You need a kim, of course you need a kimono and a nagajiban to wear under it. Um, I know that there are kimono out there that are especially made to wear a hakama, but usually those extra made kimono just for kimono rentals for those girls who want to wear a hakama to their graduation ceremony from the university. So you can definitely wear your hakama over any kimono you can think of. So don't feel restricted by any things that you are told by about hakama until today. You can wear them over any kimono you like and it's nothing wrong with that. By the way, wearing a hakama with furisode is pretty formal today. Hakama is usually for ladies not formal, it's usually casual. Um, you wouldn't wear it for a formal occasion, but graduation ceremonies are totally fine. So it's kind of changing. So I feel like there is like no restriction to hakama. You ju just can wear it whenever you want to. By speaking of this, you also need a hanhaba obi for your hakama. A half with obi. I talked about what obis are in another video. You can also check that out if you don't have a clue what a hanhaba obi is. When you put on a hakama, I really recommend to also use kimono clips. You can also use clothespins, those for hanging up your laundry and they will help you a lot. So let's jump right into it. So this is me in my nagajupan. And when you compare the hem with the hakama hem, you can see it is as long as the hakama. This would make it hard to walk in it, so we have to tie up the nagajupan and make it shorter. Fold the length of the nagajupan up. And secure this with a datejime. Pass the ends to the back and to also lift the back of the nagajupan. Secure this again with the datejime and tie it on the front. Put 
put the kimono on as you usually do. But when you lift it, lift it higher than usual. And keep the hem shorter, thus it just covers the nagojupan hem. Continue with putting the kimono on. When it's time for the first tie, the koshihimo, make sure to place it higher. Above your belly button should be just right. Fold the kimono down at your waist to create the uhashuri and straighten out. Tie the second tie, munahimo, while adjusting the collar. And this is what you wear under the hakama. This time I use an obi ita that is specialized for tying the obi on the front and turning it to the back. Measure one arm's length of the right side of the obi and clip this onto the obi ita. Secure the rest of the obi with the left clip. Hold obi and obi ita with your right hand at the right clip that will be reclipped to the middle of the obi ita. Fold the right side of the obi upwards. Wrap the left side around your waist for the first time. Stop at the front and pull to tighten. Wrap the obi again. Hold the end with your right hand. The left hand takes off the clip on the left side and pull again to fasten the obi. Put the clip back. Bring the right side to the middle and fold it into half. Secure the diagonal line you've just created to keep it in place. Take off the clip in the middle of your waist. Pull the other end of the OB to your left and fold it into half. Lay left side over right to tie a plain knot. Put both ends straight to fasten the knot. Lay the upper layer on your shoulder. Open up the lower layer to full width. This will become the wings of the bow. The wings should be a little shorter than the width between your shoulders. Measure that and wrap the length of the obi around it. Create a pleat in the middle of the bow and one over and under it. Hold this by wrapping the other end of the obi around it. Wrap it twice and put the left over length between obi and obi ita. Pull this left over down. This will fasten the bow nicely. Roll then the length up and place it under the bow behind the obi. This will function as a little cushion that will hold the bow up. Turn the obi always from left to right and don't forget to straighten out as always. This is our obi mosabi. Put the clips back onto the obi and finally it's time for the hakama. Open up the knot of the hakama. There are roughly said two types of hakama. Those which look like a skirt, like this one, and those that look like trousers and have two separate openings for legs. 
they are both put on the same way for women, of course. Step into the hakama. <laughs> and I have totally forgotten to mention that you should make sure that the side with the little plastic chip lies behind you because that's the back. So I will turn the hakama. Start with the front. Clip the front nicely to the OB. That should look out for one or two centimeter or half or one inch. Bring the straps to the back and cross them over the bow and then try to put the cross nicely around the bow and not to crush the wings. This is by the way not easy and don't bother too much. And you can see that I try to kind of fix it or make sure that the bow is still nice. Bring the ties to the front, cross them left or right and fold the right side up. to have this straight and flat line on the front. Tie a bow with the straps on the back. You can tuck this under the OB, but you don't have to. Take the back of the hakama. This little piece of plastic is actually to be tucked behind the bow, but I've never managed doing that by myself. <laughs> so it's okay when you let sit the back of the hakama on the bow and flat on your back and just ignore this little plastic piece. Bring the ties to the front, put them under the first tie and pull. Cross them left or right and wrap the right side around all ties on the front. Oops, leave in the way. So again, left or right, wrap the right side around all ties. Now it's easy, just tie a normal bow. Wrap the ends behind the bow upwards and let them cover the knot of the bow. Don't forget to take off the clips. And your look is finally complete. See, it's not that hard to put on a hakama and it covers up most of your kimono. So you don't really have to care if your kids get that day is perfect or not. When you purchase your first hakama, you will have to decide what kind of style you want to go with. When you want to wear your hakama like me with sneakers and boots and you really want to show that you wear sneakers and boots, you should go with a little shorter hakama. And when you want to wear zodi with it and tabby socks, then you should go for a little longer hakama. Usually when you purchase a hakama online, they have different heights, sizes, they're usually in meter because we are using the metric system in Japan. No insult, no insult, but I really can't deal with inches and foot and feet and yard and whatsoever. They usually have different heights and I'm gonna show you S, M, L, 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 so whatever, and the length of the hakama, that should be your length. Be careful with that. If this is a Japanese website, Japanese bodies have different proportions than white and black people have. And um, usually we have longer legs and for Japanese, the part of the stomach is a little longer, um, which means they have shorter legs. For example, I'm super short. I'm um, one meter 64, I'm super short. In Germany, I'm super short. And my husband is 10 centimeter taller than me but our legs have the same length, 
which shows that my husband is, has those 10 centimeters somewhere else, but not in his legs. So when the website says from 160 to 166, purchase this size, get the longer one, get the next size. This is not your size. This is the size for Japanese legs. When you want to go for the shorter version, like me with boots and sneakers, wearing socks, then you can of course purchase at that size. But when you want to wear it with a sodi and you have want to have a little longer hem, then you should go for a little bigger size. So I thought this would probably a helpful little advice in the end of this video. Next week, I promise, I promise you will get the Mompe video and I just hope you're looking forward to my video next week. And I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye!